Hello everyone! Today I would like to share with you a Kraken Drive driven VTOL space plane. Now what's special about this space plane is that of course it has infinite delta V and it's VTOL. It can take off and land vertically. Uh, Matt Lone, sometime in 2000 I believe, put out a challenge asking for folks to design a piston driven Kraken Drive that was throttleable from the map menu using the keyboard. And here we have achieved just that. The main differences between this and his iteration of this design, which I believe originated on Reddit, I can't I can't recall, forgive me, the, the originator of this particular design, his name, but the difference here is that we're using the larger of the two pistons from the DLC, and that we have assured that the maximum extension, 160, is not quite enough to allow these two ports to dock, which prevents any sort of snagging that was occurring in previous iterations of the design. This does allow us to achieve significant uh, impulse, so we can, we can definitely get enough force out of this thing to achieve orbit or go wherever we want to go. Now, the question that might be on your mind is, looking at this, these little these hinges here, what's going on there? Well, that's, that's where we, uh, we have our VTOL. Notice it's right on our center of mass. And the reason we're clipping through the cargo bay is because if you've played around with these enough, you'll know that once the effect engages, it engages at a certain distance and it disengages at a, at a further distance. So you actually, if you were to start this with the hinges inside of the cargo bay, the effect may not be active. Once you've activated the effect, you won't be able to turn it off because if you set your maximum extension you uh, below the cargo bay, you'll end up not being able to turn the effect off. You have to go past the cargo bay, and at that point, the effect will actually turn off. So, unfortunately, we have to clip through it. And then, so I'll issue that the next iteration of this design, it, uh, it needs to be able to fit inside of one of these Mark II cargo bays. Uh, I've thought about perhaps using the docking acquire force, but I can't seem to map that to the keyboard properly. Uh, and of course, part of the point of this is to be able to control it entirely from the map menu. Uh, consequences of this, of course, is that you have to you have to either have it engaged when you're landing, or, or rather coming down from orbit when you're when you're entering, or you have to uh, make sure it's off and then sneak it into the cargo bay so you don't have it on when you're. I have flown an iteration of this to Eve and back. Uh, I took it direct. I burnt something like 50,000 Delta V doing so. Didn't wait for a transfer window or anything, but of course, you know, infinite Delta V. You know, infinite possibilities. I think I made the trip in less than 180 days. I, can, I can't quite recall. We won't be flying to Eve today. We're just going to demonstrate uh, the basic features of the craft and, uh, yeah, whether you can find the, the, the file on the Steam Workshop. Uh, under Kraken Drive VTOL, and it will be linked in the description. Without further ado, let's go ahead and cut to uh, the launch pad, or rather the uh, runway. All right, so here we are on the runway with uh, Jeb and Bill. Uh, we will first demonstrate the vertical takeoff. One of the cargo bay open so that you can see exactly what's going on in here. As we bring that down, we'll start to see the effect. We'll want to turn SAS on. The mass alignment isn't perfect. And up she goes. Of course, we can tamper that down, slow our ascent. And we can bring her back down gently. And with some practice, I'm sure folks could do a much more uh, gentle landing than what I'm about to perform. Oof. And of course, we have to turn it off completely by bringing it up that far. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and go to orbit. Well, first we'll demonstrate the action of the, the piston here. Using our throttle, we can bring that up and down, which allows us to engage and disengage the forward motion. Let's go ahead and engage our anti-gravity vertical thruster. Close that down. And uh, let's go ahead and open up our F12 menu, just for the sake of showing that we're not using any cheats of any kind. And uh, again, this vessel is entirely stock with the DLC. You can find it on the uh, Steam Workshop under um, 
I believe I have it as Crack and Drive VTOL, and it'll be in the uh, Steam, or it'll be in the description below on the Steam link. Sometimes it can have a little difficulty breaking the sound barrier. I like to attribute that to Jeb having an extra donut that day. Uh, but I think actually I turned the throttle down a little bit when I opened the F12 menu there. Which again says, speaks to this machine's efficacy in the thrust department. Uh, you go from nothing to way too much probably for most applications. <laughs> And uh, then you have varying degrees of quite a lot as you as you bring it down. As there's not much uh, throttle control. And one of the twitchiest airplanes we've ever did see. I usually like to try to fly this uh, in a way like a normal SSTO. I aim for about 10 degrees or so, and it'll fly itself. Sometimes it has issues get, uh, breaking this uh, you know 440 barrier. And I think sometimes Jeb ate an extra donut that day. Uh, a lot of times reloading it will fix that, but usually it smokes past this barrier. I've also thought perhaps the uh, area exactly where uh, we have our vertical thruster might make a difference. We will be trying to fast forward through some of the more boring, difficult parts. Uh, not, not, I shouldn't say difficult parts, but uh, long parts to watch so that we don't have to uh, sit here for 30 minutes. I suppose one could fly this with a steeper angle of ascent if they wanted to. But I find that usually just aiming for 10 allows you to just let it fly itself. I honestly guess you could aim for whatever you wanted to. It's a decently built engine. Watch our ascent from the map menu. Pardon the clutter. This is my um, career save. And as soon as our apoapsis is appropriate, we will cut the throttle. And no, they're not abandoned. They're meant to be there. They're they got they're processing their data. All right, now we have an appropriate apoapsis. We cut our throttle. Our throttle has not been cut, but you might say, "Hey, but look at that! You're you're still increasing. You don't have anywhere near enough lift to be causing that. What's going on?" Well, that's our anti-gravity. That's our vertical. We haven't turned it off yet, which we should be able to turn off from the map menu. I have noticed uh, that there are, and right now we're seeing decay from the atmosphere, clearly. But occasionally, just as if sometimes Jeb eats a donut, sometimes that doesn't want to quite turn off in the map menu, and reloading it often works. And I will say when we're exploiting in a physics engine, we have to expect it to throw some curveballs at us in return, right? We'll go ahead and warp to our apoapsis. With the music in the map menu, we have officially entered a orbit, or rather, suborbital space, shall we say. Alright, good enough. And we will go ahead and now demonstrate the fact that we can finish our creating our orbit from the map menu using our crack and drive. And 
No Delta V required. No fuel. From the map menu, like any other ship. Quite amazing. I have taken these to EVE. I'm sure you could fly them anywhere. Uh, landing without an atmosphere, I would say, is probably a little more difficult because it will require apt control of your vertical crack and thruster, and if you, the, there isn't enough gravity, I'm not sure you could land. Uh, well, using it. I'm sure if somebody can land, they'll figure. somebody can figure it out. Who am, I, who am I kidding? Somebody will figure it out. That's good enough. I can demonstrate re-entry and landing. Yeah, a little bit more. Yeah. We'll go ahead and warp to or see the atmosphere again. ourselves reoriented. Get a better transfer at altitude. Of course, we don't want to be nosing straight into our prograde motion. We want to nose up a little bit, burn off that speed. Uh, we also want to bring our anti-grav lifts in a little bit, but we probably don't want to turn on anti-gravity. No, at least not quite yet. We'll, we'll use it to help us land, but we don't want to use it during re-entry. It might burn up. Jeb and Bill are pleased to be part of this test today. I value their lives in my career games, and they don't get to get out very much. Some folks might uh, wonder why exactly we went ahead and built such a cheaty craft in my career game. Only well, the answer is quite simple. That's where I decided to. Uh, it's, we're having fun. Besides, I don't think it's entirely cheating. Uh, developers, you know, have permitted this exploit to persist. Uh, you're essentially engineering an emergent technology within the Kerbal universe. So it's less cheaty than using a mod. Starting to nose up a little too much for my liking. Although this is a fairly built craft, I'm, I'm not used to something that are as stable as this. Yeah, more or less flies itself.
One immediate design improvement that one could make is to add air brakes. It'd probably help landing on uh, Kerbin or any other planet with an atmosphere because you'll have so much delta V in this thing you'll be tempted to use it. Uh, but I don't think it's necessary. I like to live a little dangerously. And it makes you think about, you know, using burns to slow down. And, of course, you can afford it. You have infinite delta V. We haven't engaged the anti-gravity quite yet, so if we bring it all the way up, we're only going to get a little bit of air resistance, but nothing much else than that. If we bring it on now, though, we start to get interesting behavior as we fly, because essentially gravity no longer means anything to us. If anything, we're being pushed away from it, so as we can fly, you know, directly with the horizon, our vertical speed quite moving at all what we're losing there our, our, our horizontal speed close ourselves down essentially what it allows us to do is get a very very soft landing with very very little uh, runway space which is nice because this beast is long Anti-grav. There we are. Give us some break. And good job, Jeb. And we'll take one last look here. Once again, we have mapped a custom axis, uh, two and one, to act for our hinges, and then for our main throttle, our piston here. We have mapped to, of course, our main throttle. This here is part of the hinge, as you can see, so it serves no function in this Kraken drive, and you could design it in some other case. But very useful. Very GT. Very Kraken. I'll thank you all for watching, and have a great day.